Yeah, this this year is pain for Shane. Next year is can we come up with a rhyming scheme for next year yet? Next year, if you finish last, you win no matter what because you're going to get a top three pick and it's going to be like an impact. Like, this isn't like Connor McDavid uh, and like and then it, Dylan Strom goes third. No, this is like you know Connor McDavid, Eichel, possibly like a Tavares, Stamkos being available. So yeah, I think for a assets, maybe you include a first or a second in, in 2023 as or, as an a asset. But in terms of like. On the farm, like you have Pelche, Coronado, uh, Zary, Dustin Wolf. What else? Is, like, is there anyone else you think is in that group? I wouldn't classify anyone else as A. Now, okay, you're, you're, of- let's just let's just say this hypothetically, and you know we'll we'll openly speculate because speculation is fun. Let's just say you're the Flames. You're going okay. Uh, how much does it cost to get uh, one of those highfalutin fancy fours that the San Jose Sharks have right now? Uh, well, they got first some guys. All, avoid, uh, first of all, I would avoid Timo Meyer. Um, uh, you know he's scoring like crazy. I uh, but like his co- his qualifying offer with one year to go is ten million dollars, and like people are already freaking out over the Kachuk qualifying offer. I don't think you need that with two people and nineteen million dollars. I mean, so. you can just not qualify him. Yeah, but if you're gonna pay assets to get someone like that, you're you gotta you, you yeah. gotta. So, that's but I, I the the one I've seen most often is Tom Tomas Hurdle. He's, he's, he plays the right, he's a, yet another left shot forward to play the right side. So good for him. He he's, like can play center. He can play center. So that would potentially knock Michael Backlund down the rotation a bit. So your second line is what Mon, you could, you could have a second line of Mangiapani, Hurdle, and uh, Blake Coleman potentially. If they wait, if they wait and Dallas falls out of it, the perfect, perfect, perfect piece for a second line with Manjapani would be Joe Pavelski. 100%. He's on a one-year deal. He's looking for a cup. If you're competing, he's the world's best. You, then you'd have Kachuk and Pavelski that could tip the puck and just part and tremendous. One of the best in front of the net, maybe the best since Thomas Holmstrom in Detroit. Like he's been fantastic. He is currently the best tipper in the entire league by a mile over landis cog and and chucks one another one of those really good my, my, my cousin the sharks fan one of his cats is named after pavelski so my cousin would love that maybe I his daughters him. become planes fans he's a right hand shot he can play right wing or center depending what you need like he's played center for years i probably more suited the right wing at this point but i mean based on how calgary plays you he he's just an offensive player all around i like him Person. Okay. Hurdle. Okay. Hurdle. D- Hurdle's more of a center, and they really need a center, and he's kind of a power forward. He too, uh, he creates his offense the same way Man Japan. He loves driving the net and creating chaos around the crease. So that having two guys that are always nose to the net down there could create a lot of uh, garbage. Because then, because then potentially you have uh, a guy in Kachuk that does that in the first line, a guy in in. Uh... And hurdle that does that in the second line, a guy in Wajapani who does that in the third line, or you put them all I, together and just have everyone hate life. Here's the thing: I'd, I'd, I'd absolutely with the way they're constructed, like they're, they're, if they want an impact piece, they probably are only getting one. And so I would load Manch. I would load. I would load up two lines for offense, and and you could still do Backlund, Coleman, someone. You'd be Dubé, Manch, player X, and then Lucic, Backlund, Coleman as your third line to shut play, players down. Uh, if, if you get another impact player that can drive play at five on five, you can put Dubé in because Manj already does that. You can put Dubé there because Dubé's offense is still like his speed and his, his play, like his ability, I think would help that line and his ability to get back on the back check. So I, I, I like that. I, they, they definitely need to do something. Like they have, like they, yeah. it, they want to compete. They have to get us. And it has, in my mind, it has to be a center. They need a second line center, someone that can play between Lindholm and Backlund and impact the game every night, whether it's specifically in offense, because they've got the shutdown guy. And Lindholm's, Lindholm, people are talking about as a Selkie leader based on his offense plus his defensive impact against top competition and how well he's done. So you, you absolutely need a second line center. So that's why I've limited it in my options right now to Pavelski and Hurdle. If the other something okay. something else comes up, I mean, consider it. But you you need to make the right move and you need to do it so it complements what you already have. And Manj is yeah. a tremendous creator of offense around the crease, 
And so he really needs someone that can either get him the puck around the crease or also be in the crease to finish off those chances he creates. And especially wow. if you, if you look at the things the flames weren't good at in Tampa, I think our hurdle solves, or at least tries to solve that kind of issue in terms of generating offense right around, right below the goal, right underneath the, the, the face off circles. And all, the other thing is, you know, what is your and GMs talk to their coaches all the time. And, you know, you know, he's going to Sutter and what does he want? And like, even with his comments, he, you know, he complimented Pelche the other day, said he still needed time. I, I, I agree with that. I'm fine with that. But he also at the tail end of his comments just had to mention that Pelche was undersized. You know, he, 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 he is and he is and he is. So, you know, but just just thinking about that, you know, the coach really likes guys that can play that aren't undersized. And Thomas Hurdle falls in that category which is why I think, you know, it, it, it's, it's a prime topic and absolutely play. People should talk about it. Um, it a lot logis- with the Valimaki going down to Stockton and the, the cap banking, it's logistically possible. And uh, if you, and then afterwards you got, well, that's a conversation for another time. But I mean, the other thing is if you're going to acquire a player at the trade deadline, you need to, we need to discuss um, eventually uh, the Johnny Gaudreau situation. Not, not maybe not right now. That's, that's going to take a whole podcast in itself. But oh, well, at, at some point, we're going to dedicate a whole episode just to talk yeah. about Gaudreau because, like, we I'll say to. this for Johnny Gaudreau. Like, you know, i this. This will make me sound like an old, old man because I am. I the first Flames event I ever covered was the first development camp Gaudreau ever came into. As uh, he was seventeen, he turned eighteen the month after development camp, and he looked small. He was smaller than uh, the, uh, than Alex Ruiz who at the time was working on working for Flames TV. Like Alex Ruiz did a stand up with him, and like she had a couple inches on him. Like he was legitimately short. And then he, he, you know, I think he's legit. He's about five seven, five six and a half, five seven. He's maybe a buck sixty five, buck seventy with his gear on, but he's just, you know, he he. We, we, when Daryl was talking about, you know. Elite, elite offensive players. Goudreau is an elite player in the USHL. And at that point, people weren't sure about the USHL. And then he went to college and he became like right away a very good to borderline elite college player as a freshman. Then he was an elite co- uh, collegiate scorer as a, a sophomore. He was one of the top, he was a, a, he was a shortlisted player for the Hobie Baker. And then the year he, uh, his junior year when he went pro, he you know, the 13, 14 season, he won the Hobie Baker. He was, he was a gold medalist at the world juniors. Like he, he did, he literally did everything he did you could score. as a collegiate player at the world juniors too. I believe like, I think he led the yeah. 7.7 games, I think. And- he, like jo- Johnny Gaudreau was, you know, if you looked at his playing style and asked yourself, how the hell is this guy going to succeed? The answer is by you point to him on the ice and say, by doing that, uh, Pelche is more of a, a backlandy player. He has, a, I'd say, a bit more offensive pop to his game than Backlund, but he's smaller, and he he relies on his speed. He relies on his senses, his his elusiveness. Like you know, don't get me wrong, I'm a big Pelche guy, but Pelche offensively is not in the same league as Johnny Gaudreau, and I don't he, think he should be expected to be. The, the only real direct NHL level comparable, and it's it's not close because the other guy is a little better. But for me, the only real like 100% comparable based on playing styles and and and, and stick hands is Patrick Kane, and Kane's better, no doubt. He's for for, for 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 Pelche or for for, for Johnny, Johnny for Johnny for Johnny. Yeah, I'd say so. I think Pelche needs to so. model his game more like Jonathan Marshus though. Like that's, that's I'd say he's I'd he's like. sort of he's sort of in the Marcheso Mangiapane style Claude, of sort Claude of Giroux, Claude Giroux kind of like like no, I don't think he'll ever get those offensive totals. But I feel like he, he was great defensively at the World Junior. Like, there's a reason he ended up on the top line at the World Junior. He's he's, he, he's let's let's be honest. He's he's he's, right he's probably going to end up being somewhere between Backlund and Froelich in terms of his overall team yeah. fit. You, which is you need those guys. But I I do I sympathize middle, with Daryl. I yeah. I sympathize with Daryl because the idea is like you you want to have like realistically you don't want you you want. Pelche to come into training camp next year with some swagger and with his eyes on stealing someone's job because that's what he's going to need to do. And I think he'll be able to do it, but I think he'll, I think he probably needs a game or two in the NHL to show him what he has, doesn't have in the tank right now. I, I, I think uh, if the flames clinch, I think we, we've Pike and I have talked about this. We, we, we talk hockey literally nonstop all the time, but uh, I think if they clinch at any point in time and there's games left, I think, not only if he's still like top 10 scoring in the AHL at that point, I think he earned 
the call up. Like he earns the right to make that NHL money the last few days based on how great he played in the minors. And you can call yeah. him up. Play him two, I, I, three. You're not up and sending him down. I, I think the last, the last two games of the season, if the flames have clinched, the last couple of games of the season are about making sure they're ready mentally. So the two games before that, if you have the ability to, to sit some guys and bring up a Luke Philp, a, a Pelche, or a, a Pospisil, guys like that, some guys just to see if they have anything in the tank. The Flames have a lot of players who have uh, who are going to be RFAs, if they, so they have to decide they're going to qualify them. Some guys who are going to be group six free agents, they have to decide what they want to do with them. So I think those kind of things. But yeah, the, I think this is going to be fascinating. And, you know, we're, we're gonna we're, we're gonna hit time in a, certain, in a little bit, but I'm I'm just curious. Like the Flames can only do one thing, like one substantial thing. They can do it without removing anybody from the roster, which is great because the roster, as currently constructed, is good enough that they're fairly comfortably in the playoff picture right now. They're not in danger of falling out immediately with another bad fortnight. Probably they are out of the playoff picture, but they have enough runway that they can just keep the gang together. And the way how, they've played, how much I just, the way they've played I, I'm like against lower level competition, like not what they just went through the gauntlet. They'll be fine. Like, yeah, yeah they're, they're I, I feel comfortable right now saying they're probably a playoff team, but my question is, what do you, what, what's the, if they can only do one thing, if they can only do, you know, Tomas Hurdle or Joe Pavelski, what price tag are you comfortable with? Because, you know, if, if the, if the price tag is a first and one or two, a first, a second and a prospect for, uh, for however many games of Hurdle or Pavelski or whoever, is that worth it? Question, uh, counter question, which is very important to my answer. Does the GM currently know the state of his status? Should he not get to where management wants him to go? Like, if he feels like if this doesn't work, is he gone? Like, does the GM know that? Like, like is I, that is that? I don't. I, honestly, I, I'm not sure if he cares. Like, I, I think, I think, I think I, this this nice should be manage from a. It's nice to manage from like a future standpoint, but like also, when are you going to go for it as well? I I think this is I think this is the year. They have to. Well, it, it put. They got the coach. This is the this is the GM's roster. This is the one he built. Yeah, albeit there's some flaws. You're gonna have holes. That you can add to like if they're in a playoff spot at the trade deadline, which they should be. You're gonna add to this roster without subtracting from it. So that's that's always something like okay, let's go. And he hasn't at like he reminds me of Kevin Shevel Day off in a bit. You know how long it took yeah. Kevin Shevel Day off to add Paul Stastny? Years. He wouldn't trade a pick. He wouldn't add nothing. It wasn't okay, until if it's, he was like he wasn't until he was ready, right? If if the price tag is a first, a second, and let's just say they ask for Connor Zary, do you do it? I think no. No, I think that's uh, for a rental. I think first and a prospect is where you want to play. Like you could trade this year's first round pick if you're a playoff team. I'm fine with that. You got two seconds. That backs it up. Uh, you know, a, a decent. If you're going to include one of the A prospects. I don't think they're going to include the center. Uh, you know, it depends on how what the other team values too. Like I, I, I don't think that I don't think they look at moving Wolf. No, I don't. Think if if you ask for Wolf, I think it's a very short conversation. If you ask for Wolf, I better get a player with term, and you better be taking Sean Monahan. Like, like you know, you yeah. And they, and the thing is, even even if they move Monahan or buy him out, they can't afford to add guys with term because that the money they don't have yet for Monahan is probably spoken for. We yeah, it's tied up in Manch, Chuck, and Gaudreau, like a hundred percent. So you know, and you, then next year you also, I, I, I've said this before. I really don't see Nikita Zadorov coming back. I feel like he's going to want to raise or something. And you know, just the marriage with, his I don't, I don't see Pitlick coming back. I don't see, I don't, I, I don't see a Richardson lot of these guys come back. back. I don't, I th I think maybe uh, if he can pick it up or whatever, start producing, I think I can see. R Richardson has two rings back. and a lot of mileage on him. And I mean, he's earned his rings. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Oh yeah. He was, he was, he, and he's, he got a goal, 19 goals one season too. Like he's not like he's. So, so you're, you're, you're thinking it's a first and a prospect or a first and a second. And you'd be comfortable with that. I, I think, uh, I think if it's going to be a first and a second, you've, you've got to still got to include like a lower level prospect. A, you know, it, it depends on the negotiation. Like uh, I, I think a first, absolutely. You're, uh, if you're picking lower than 20th, your first, and you're trying to win, trade your first. Like that's, it's you're gonna you could the way Calgary's drafted lately. I'm fine with them. They have two second round picks. That's both the way they've been drafting. That's at least one impact player. Just just on revisionist history right now, and uh, 
I, they absolutely need a second line center. So you, you, you put start the table with, Hey, I need that center. Uh, let's start the contracts. I'll give you a first. What prospects are you interested in? Uh, the only one I really wouldn't touch. And I mean it, I wouldn't touch him is Matthew Coronado. He's in a tier of his own above Pelche and Zari in my personal opinion. And you no, know, like if you're going to get, if you're, he's, he's worth more than the first, he's worth more than the first round pick this year. I believe that in my based on everything I've, I've tracked, watched. Absolutely. He's the only prospect. And I, I would, I would have traded Coronado for Eichel 100%. Like, like I wouldn't, but, but for a rental, no, that's, that's not a prospect you trade. You're not, that's too much future. That's a guy that I project to be a top six impact, possibly first line forward. So, I mean, let's, let's be honest. This is the organization that traded Brett Hall, but they got two very Suarez. big pieces. And Marty okay, Smith. no, no. Let's no. Fo- if if the idea is you're trying to you're trying to do things like they traded guys for John Tanelli in '86, mm-hmm. they traded guys, they traded Brett Hall, and you know they got Wamsley and, and Rob Ramage. I mean, if if you think you're a piece away, you, and I think you owe it to the the group that you put together to go and get that piece. And mm-hmm. the price is going to suck. Let's be honest. But that's the yeah. that's the price you pay. I trade. I trade Pelche. I trade Zari. I would. I would. 